Good morning, and let's go ahead and get started on uh, this presentation on tolerances. This will be the first part of the uh, presentation, and let's go ahead and do what we got to do. So um, let's talk about tolerances as far as what they are. Um, understand that when you, things are manufactured or things are uh, bought into production, uh, designed, uh, there's going to be an understanding that what you put on the drawing is not going to always in or is not going to always be uh, what's actually going to come out. So if you specify that the overall length of a certain part is going to be three quarters of an inch, a lot of times when the part is actually manufactured, the overall length is going to be near a quarter of an inch, three quarters of an inch as you specify, but it may not be exactly three quarters of an inch because there's just no way that you're going to manufacture something to exactly that specification uh, every time. So. Uh, there's an understanding that there's going to be some variation and therefore we have to allow for that variation uh, in the form of tolerances. Tolerances are applied usually to parts that are going to put, be put together uh, in an assembly especially. Uh, you know, like if you have a rod that goes into a, a hole on another part, uh, there's got to be some tolerance allowed uh, on there. Uh, otherwise, you know, there, you're just going to cost, it's going to cost too much money to try to keep it, to, keep it together and, uh, and, and keep costs down. So, understand that tolerances are, are certainly something that's going to have to happen okay uh, when it comes to tolerances though there's kind of two schools of thought with tolerance and that's pretty much specified on this slide uh, and it's that if you have tolerances that are too large it can make things function incorrectly uh, it, it can basically if you have a, a spot in a hole or something like that that's too so if you have a uh, you know tolerance that's too large, then that means that you're not going to be able to put things together in some cases, or things that might fit too loose or too tight uh, from part to part, and there's going to be uh, a big problem there. Whereas if you have the opposite, which is small tolerance, that means that every time you have a part that doesn't fit that bill uh, of, of measurements, then you're not going to be able to use it. So the more the smaller the tolerance you have, the more it's going to cost to get parts exactly the way they're supposed to be. So uh, costs generally would increase with smaller tolerances. So you have to find that specific uh, fine line where a tolerance that's not so large that it makes the part not function, but not so small that it makes it difficult to produce. Okay, so now here's the copy of the actual tolerance standards. And just as a reminder in this particular presentation, you can find this presentation uh, on the LMS and download and watch it at your leisure, but obviously would like to you know, hear some commentary or you can watch this video uh, for that commentary. So um, it is specified here that if you have a, um, this is a Nancy standard, uh, if you have a tolerance for each dimension on a sketch will have a tolerance, be it specific or general. And we'll talk about the difference between those two uh, in just a second. All right, so here's its official definition for tolerance. A tolerance is an acceptable amount of dimensional vari variation, excuse me, that will still allow an object to function, function correctly. Okay, so it's just basically telling you that you know, if you have a uh, dimension of one inch and it's allowed to be within a hundredth of an inch or a thousand, not a hundredth of an inch on either side, then if it was 1.003, it's okay. All right, it's within a tolerance. So that means the part you're still specifying that the part will still be okay, will still work just fine. Uh, there are types of there are three types of tolerances, specific tolerances that you will see on drawings. Uh, they are all in this particular image, and let's go through all three of them right now. The first of those is called a limit dimension. And a limit dimension, and we'll talk about the specific thing, is uh, circled on the on the slide here. And then we also have a something called a bilateral tolerance, and we also have a unilateral tolerance. And those three dimensions are sort of circled on this drawing. When you go to the activity, and you see the activity, the first drawing is going to ask you, or the first objective is going to ask you to go through these particular drawings and to specify whether or not uh, or where the tolerances are and what kind of tolerances they are. So let's talk about all three of them and what they mean. First is the limit dimensions. All the limit dimension is telling you is that there is an upper and a lower limit to the size of the dimension for that part. So they're saying here that in this particular space 0.125 is the lower limit and 0.126 is the upper limit. And any dimension that's in between those two numbers is acceptable. Bilateral tolerance means that you have a specified target dimension. Here's your bilateral tolerance, by the way. You have a specified target dimension. There's another one that allows um, that you're looking for. But if it was more or less than the amount that's next to it uh, in size, then it's OK. So the one on the top, 0 0.250, that's the uh, counterbore depth, 0 0.250. Um, sorry, countersink depth, excuse me. Uh, and if it was more than 0 0.003 than that or less than 0 0.003 than that, it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, so plus minus sign, and you see the plus minus sign, and you see a number after it. That is the uh, sig the sign, excuse me, that you're looking at a bilateral tolerance. Um, okay, so uh, and I was right. Actually, it was counterbore. Heh, look at that. 
All right. Now, we also have uh, something called unilateral tolerance, and that's basically saying that you are allowed to hit that number as a target, but if it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller in one direction, then it's okay. So on here, it is perfectly acceptable for the hole to be 0 0.504 in diameter, but it cannot be smaller than 0.5 because that would probably cause an interference. Okay, so unilateral tolerance is basically specifying that. There's the unilateral tolerance on the, uh, on the drawing. Okay, so in this particular image, you can find all three of these uh, between this part. This is the same part, but a couple of different views of the part. Uh, you'll see a couple of long break lines to indicate that there's a solid mass in the middle there. Um, and you can find all three of them on here. Here, for example, is your unilateral tolerance to indicate that the size can be greater than 0.5 by 0 0.005. There's a bilateral tolerance to indicate the diameter of that uh, counter bore <laughs> is uh, 1.170 uh, plus or minus two thousandths of an inch. That's actually a pretty small precise tolerance. And then here's a limit dimension uh, to indicate that the overall width can be between 0.975 and 0.980. Okay, so now specified dimension, as mentioned before, is the target dimension in which the limits are calculated uh, on your tolerance. Oops, excuse me. So that 1.505 is your specified target dimension. So that's what you want it to get to. But again, you're allowed a variance of, in this case, 5 hundredths of an inch. All right, limits are the maximum and the minimum size showed by the tolerance dimension. If it was limit dimensions, these limits are actually given right to you. But if they're not, they're easy to calculate. All you got to do is basically take the specified dimension, either add or, well, add, really, uh, the positive or negative variance in both cases. So your upper limit is just the, uh, the plus number, 1.50 plus 0 .005, 0 0.05, excuse me, in this case, whereas the lower limit is 1.5 minus 0 0.05. So you have an upper limit of 1.55, a lower limit of 1.45. The tolerance itself, the actual number here, is the difference of those two limits. So if you take the upper limit of 1.55 and subtract 1.45, the total tolerance is a tenth of an inch. So you're allowed a tenth of an inch variance from here uh, in, this, in this particular dimension, uh, 0.05 in either direction in this case. Okay, so the tolerance is calculated that way. The tolerance in this case is a number. Okay, so when you see the activity, you'll see that tolerance is actually required uh, to be calculated in uh, a lot of the sections, so do pay attention to that. Okay, now here's a, just a simple number line example as to why it's 0.1. If you're not sure about mathematically why it is, it's because when you add 0 0.05 and then subtract 0 0.05, that's a total variation of the tolerance in this case of 0 0.01. So the distance between your upper and lower limits on a number line would be the same thing as just subtracting the two. All right, now notice that what we've talked about so far have been specific tolerances. However, understand that as you remember in the standard every dimension has a tolerance or must have some sort of tolerance okay unless it is stock or unless it's something but you're not going to see too much of that you're going to basically understand that every dimension that you look at at a drawing is going to have a tolerance but if it's not specified you have to make an assumption as to a general tolerance and the general tolerance is basically assumed if there's no specific tolerance given so if you've got a drawing that lists a dimension, like an overall length or an overall depth or an overall height, and there's no tolerance after it, there is a way to figure out what that tolerance actually is. And it just goes by the amount of decimal points. So uh, if it's an angle, you're going to understand there's about a half degree of variation, both plus and minus. But if you have a linear dimension, uh, otherwise, if it's got one decimal place, if there's basically a number over here, any number, it could be a double digit, triple digit number, whatever, and then there's one decimal place after it, the understanding is that the tolerance allowed in either direction is 0 0.020. Okay. Whereas if you indicate more precision, that tolerance drops to 0 0.010. And if you indicate even more precision, it's 0 0.005 in either dimension. So in either direction, excuse me. So you're going to make that assumption uh, if there's no tolerance specified. Okay. All right. Here's an example. So you see on this particular drawing, you've got a series of dimensions on here. Not all of them have specified tolerances. Okay, here's one of them right there. So 0.3, sorry, 3.00, since there's two decimal places on that, you're understanding that the um, actual variance in this case is going to be 0 0.01 in either direction on that particular dimension. And the same would be true, right? Sorry, the tolerance in that. And the same would be true, excuse me, for the other um, dimensions over here, 1.0, 4.0, 7.0, 8.0 overall. Okay. All right, so I'm going to end this part here. We're going to, on the second part, we're going to talk about fit, and we'll talk about a couple more uh, terminal, bits of terminology uh, in the uh, second part of this video. So see you then.